Well, so today is April 1st, 2022, and we're going to be having some major work being done, plumbing work, because our main line going out to the street out there is backed up big time. All this water here that you see, that I'm showing you on the ground, is sewage coming from within the house. And as you can see right there, that's where it's bagging up from, from this uh, downspout drain here. This one is the one on the south side of the house. Um, as you can see, it's got toilet paper and stuff there, so you can imagine what else has been coming up here. We've had them to try to rot this with their snake as well as with uh, hydro jetting with no success. So, what they're going to be doing is, and what you can see here, uh, they've already, utility companies have already come out and they've marked the line. So this yellow is the natural gas. That white, I mean, I'm sorry, the blue, that's for water. And because we have a downspout on the other side, the north side of the house, they connect like somewhere right here in the front of our landscaping. And so what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to dig all the way down to the plumbing to replace it and then they're going to put what they call a cutout in there so that in the future when we need to rot it they'll just do it from somewhere right up in here so yeah this is a big major repair first one that we've had in such a actually this is the first one major repair that we've had on our home so yeah stay tuned so as you can see, they're moving an excavator into place now to go over here. And I moved the landscape blocks from all from right there. Okay, so as you see now, he's digging in. And so they, from what I understand, it's going to take about... Uh, go down about five to six feet so I'll come back when they're done look at these huge bricks that they pulled up right there and they've only gone down maybe three or four feet so as you can see here they started digging right here and they didn't really hit anything, so they're going to dig over in this spot because that's closer to where the main line is coming directly out of the house. And then you can see here, look at these big boulders. Look at that. Look at my foot. This is, look how big these boulders are. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the main pipe. Uh, they've already started doing uh, cutting so that they can replace the... Uh, pipe with uh, PVC Right, so they are all done. This is the clean out here as you can see down there they were cut out a piece of the uh, ceramic uh, Sewer line and replace it with PVC and so this stack is going to go all the way up uh, Come up just above the ground once they fill this in and they'll be able to ride out our main sewage through this clean out as opposed to having to go in the house and we're just waiting for an inspector to come to take a look at it to make sure everything is all good city so inspector all right so here's our clean out that they installed and um what happened was when they were refilling the put in the dirt to uh, around to fill in the hole uh, there was about three-fourths done and then um, the excavator operator he accidentally hit this and knocked it over and so I mentioned to Tom that um, that he had did that and he saw it you know and he you know used the excavator to move it back and he was like oh yeah it should be okay you know you know that happens all the time and I was like uh, okay that may happen all the time but it's like the way that I saw it move, I'm like, it had to be cracked, right? So I end up calling them that same day and told them, explained to them what happened and told them, you know, I got to wait for the city to come out 
in order to fix the issue on their end because this was literally filled all the way up to the top. So <laughs> it's been about three weeks now. The city has been out. They've been doing work. They're not done yet. But I just thought to come out here to just, you know, take a look because uh, I've been checking on about once a week. And most of the time, it's filled like halfway up, right? And this thing is going down like four to five feet. So today, I took it off. And look at that. See that? No water, right? And you see the water flowing from inside. But if you look right there. Yeah, right there. You see the break. You see that? Look at that. That's where that break is. It's right there. So they're gonna have to come back out and redo this. And I'm kind of upset about that because you know I can't do the yard work. I can't do anything until this was resolved. I mean I'm glad the water went down so that that way you know it shows that you know the guy made you know he made a, mis a careless mistake doing what he did you know they should have just shoveled the rest in as they got closer to it I mean look at that it's clearly broken off and if I wasn't out here and I actually saw that him do that we wouldn't have never known yep so that just goes to show you need to watch people when they doing work on your house especially stuff that you can't easily get to like once they're done because you have no idea what kind of damage they could have done so today I just wanted to show off our new champion uh, 22 inch uh, tiller this is the 212 cc uh, engine gas powered tiller and I just want to say this thing is awesome because the project that I've been working on is our front yard. We had a clean out put in right over there. So they literally had to tear up our entire yard because uh, they had to, you know, dig. And our tree here plus our evergreens over there, tree roots were just all over here. And over the years, it's been hard for me to grow grass from grass seed. And so this year with having a clean out installed you know I had the idea well might as well just go ahead and prep our yard so that we can put sod down and after doing a lot of research um, having a tiller a garden tiller was the best option and out of all of the garden tillers out there none of them really mentioned about how they did with tree roots so I was like well you know, this is the most powerful front tiller that I could find. It's for, and it has a reverse function on it too. So, as you can see, with our ground here, actually this pile here, I just shoveled that from the ground back up here. But you can see, I tilled this ground. It took about 40 minutes to do it, and more so because of the tree roots. But you can look at the ground and you can see, you know, see, look, at, look at that. It did such an awesome job with digging up not only the soil, but even breaking the tree roots. You know, like look at this one here. It broke this one. Okay. And that wasn't the only one. Um, you can see all these little smaller ones here and everything like that. So I'm going to take you over here to my wheelbarrow. Look at all these tree roots that this tiller uh, either chomped up or broke it in a sense where I was able to cut it with my tree trimmer, which is right here. So this tiller works awesome. Um, if you're in the market for a tiller and you've got tree roots that you have to deal with, I highly recommend this one. Um, also, it's a good idea to make sure that you don't dig too deep too fast so do like an inch or two especially if you got tree roots or your ground has never been tilled before it makes it work so much better here's some of the 
uh, tree roots and uh, grass that I had also tilled when I um, started tilling the ground. Um, actually, this whole area over here had uh, grass on it, and the tiller actually got, you know dug it up really nicely. Okay, and then also just to show you, um, as you can see, all the tins down here, none of them are broke. And like I said, it 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 jumped around a lot. I um, mean, it stalled out once, especially when I hit one of those real thick tree roots that's about an inch, inch and a half thick. But outside of that, um, I mean, it, it worked really good. So this is an excellent tiller. I highly recommend it. Okay, so we got our uh, garden soil delivered, which you can see right here. Uh, this is uh, seven yards worth of topsoil. And as you can see, it's a big pile. It's a really huge pile. So as you see our yard, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start filling in the areas where this, it's low, like for example, over here uh, by the clean out, and then some of the other areas where you see that it's, you know, not as smooth. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this yard roller here, which it actually worked real good because I used it to flatten everything out after I tilled it. So, yeah, I'm about to get to work now. And here, here's another look at it that is a big pile look at that big pile okay so I'm all done putting down the garden soil um, I put three inches all over here on the front yard as well as on this side over here and it took me about nine hours to do it not all in one day obviously um, the yard roller actually did a great job with flattening it out you know and you know just trying to make it level uh, and everything I'm very pleased with how the yard roller worked and then here is the the mountain or the yeah the mountain of um, garden and soil and as you can see I used a nice amount yeah because like over on this side this is where I got most of it from it was all the way over here, you know, by the curb, yep, right here. So I, I used quite a bit. So we got quite a bit left over. I still got to work on the back and the backyard. Um, but yeah, I like how it turned out. Yeah, a lot of work though, a lot of work. Okay, so now what I'm about to do, these are our uh, landscaping rocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up. And as you can see, that they have algae growing on them and so what I'm gonna do clean them up real nice using my pressure washer here and this is the solution that I'll be using and so when I come back these all be clean and I'm actually going to go ahead and put them uh, out front where they're supposed to be at okay so I just wanted to kind of show you how much better the landscape bricks looks once they've been pressure washed now they haven't been dried yet so well, once they're dry they're going to be a little lighter but you can see the difference uh, there so having a pressure washer is actually if you don't have one is actually a great tool to do little simple things around the house that um, doesn't doesn't require a lot at all I mean I was able to do these in less than I don't know about three minutes or so so it doesn't take that long okay so I've got the landscape rocks down um, as you can see you know they're a lot lighter compared to when they were wet and everything and another thing that you want to do when putting landscape rocks down 
is you see this here this is a weed stop and what it is it's a fabric that allows water to seep down into the ground but it doesn't allow roots or anything to grow up from it so this helps so that the rocks over time they won't settle settle into the ground and then all of them are kind of you know being uneven okay so the side is delivered and this is it right here and right over here I've got my wheelbarrow to help me out and then I'm gonna put down this Scott's Turf Builder uh, starter for new grass so I'm gonna wet the ground first because it's like 90 degrees today you know just to kind of wet it a little bit then I'm gonna put this starter floor down then I'm gonna start putting down the sod okay so I'm all done laying the sod as you can see and it actually went real well uh, most challenging parts were having to trim out areas like when going around the tree and you know over there where the landscape rocks are but outside of that uh, yeah it, it turned out real nice um, I started on this end first because I had the straight edge from the sidewalk so this way my rows would be straight as I'm you know going up towards this way which has to work real well since I had already had used my yard roller over the existing um, garden soil it was pretty much flat so I didn't have any dips or anything like that in there but it is a good idea to use a yard roller once the side has been laid down I would suggest after the first watering to use your yard roller to get out any air pockets from underneath uh, there so I'll put the type of sod uh, in the video because uh, I forgot the name of it but I'll put it in the video but yeah it turned out real good and so all I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be watering it uh, for the next uh, two weeks uh, at least two to three times a day for about 30 minutes and as you can see here you know this is an area where the two pieces join together there's a little space there so I just put a little garden soil there um, and everything like that yeah I almost forgot to show you too and uh, there's the clean out there so you know I dug around it about maybe two inches and uh, I cut the sod around it as I you know laid it going across it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some edger on the outer part where it meets up against the grass and then I'm going to fill the rest in with some uh, white landscape rocks and also I just wanted to show you this is a sod cutting knife and I know that you can cut it using the utility knife but I'm going to tell you this right here this worked out great um, as you can see it has two different edges that you can use to cut from and um, I didn't have to flip the sod over to the dirt side in order to cut it I was able to cut it like you know when I was laying it and I need to cut a piece I just go ahead and cut a piece even if it's small it cut through it with no problem so I'll highly recommend using a sod cutting knife over a utility knife it's worth the investment sidewalk meets the uh, yard um, that's probably the reason why I've um, got the brown spots there but as far as everywhere else yeah it took really well um, I'm about to do the first cut on it and then what I'll do is I'll come back and show you what it looks like but as you see yeah it looks really good and you can't even really see the seams from the side when I laid it down um, and everything like that and then all of this mostly it is from me watering the grass because we hardly got any rain for that 19 days um, a couple days ago we got a good downpour but that's pretty much it but outside of that yeah I had to water this I watered it at least two to three times a day for about um, up here for about 45 minutes to an hour each time 
Yeah, and this part here, this section here, I laid this down uh, last, and it was yellow because I think the sod was about four days old. Uh, but you see, it took real well over on this side here too. So let me go ahead and cut this, and then I'll come back and show you the end result. I also forgot to mention, I ended up having a, I had so much sod left over that I went on here and recited this whole side over here. Even though I really didn't need it, there were a few spots that were bare that I could have just filled in with grass seed. But because I had so much side left over, I just said, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put this down. I think I put this down, I don't know, maybe day three of the side being delivered. And it turned out well. Um, there's a spot here that doesn't have any... Uh, grass on and this is more so because I was using a wheelbarrow carrying like a couple hundred pounds of stuff back and forth quite a few times so it kind of messed that up but I can fill that in with some um, uh, seed but you see how nice it turned out let me show you the other side this is uh, the patio and all this is sod um, this was laid down on day two of the sod being delivered and you can see here that it took really well. Over here you'll see where it's a little different as far as um, the ground being a little lower and everything. And that's because you see all that side? I've got 13 rows left. Pretty much can't use them even though you see grass growing out of them. But I had this whole section. It must have been about 50 rows of side left over. And so... What I did was, um, I let the side, the roll stay here, and then I just did the rest. And then eventually, once I was done with the south side of the house, came back, moved all of these because most of it was gone. And then I, you know, went on ahead and soldered this part. But as you can see, yeah, it turned out really nice. Yeah, and of course, obviously, you know, I would have loved to have done this part, but I just couldn't. I couldn't get to it in time. Um, but yeah, see, see the rolls. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So you see, even though the grass is growing out of the side, see, look at that. See, because it's been rolled up, and I doubt very seriously if I can use that. So all these rolls are, you know, pretty much a goner, but. It's okay, I'll salvage as much as I could. All right, so I am all done um, cutting the grass, and yeah, it, it turned out real nice. Um, as you can see from the side here, um, you could the rolls went uh, that way. This is the way that I had applied the side, and you can't even see them. Um, there are some areas where you'll see little lines there, and that's from the lawnmower. Uh, wheels but outside of that yeah it turned out really nice even uh, over here by the landscaping uh, bricks and that it looked really nice so I'm very pleased with this and like I said it, it only took about two weeks for the sod to take root but I ended up waiting because you know I didn't put the sod down all at the same time um, but see even over here it looked really nice and there's our clean out uh, so I got to fill this in with rocks so that that way it doesn't anything grow in there but at the same time it'll kind of cover it up so it's not um, visible and then if we ever need to use it we'll just move the rocks out the way little landscape rocks and then you know be able to have access to it and then I also I got to put some more red mulch down there and then over here See, even this side, even this side turned out really well. Yep, it looks really nice. I am so pleased with this. And then, uh, you know, just looking towards the back in the backyard, you can see how nice that looks. I'll take you back there in a minute. And then over here on the city side, uh, you see how well it looks. So uh, let me take you in the back so you can see back there. Okay. Okay, so here on the south side of the house, um, you can see uh, how 
this this part wasn't as tall as the rest of the grass like up front here could be because it had a couple days to grow but you know still it still turned out nice but then also this is a high traffic area too all right so you know in this part i haven't done yet and then let's walk on over here yeah so you see look at how nice that looks and before this was all uneven because of the tree roots you know so i, I built up the ground with a gardening soil for about maybe four inches and then laid the sod in it's not smooth but it's definitely not like it was before yeah yeah the only thing is, is this part right here that i did last um on this side because the side was there i couldn't level the ground the way i wanted to but i'm still pleased with it